Hello and welcome to this first episode of The Closure Pills. I'm planning to make this a weekly uh, thing where we go through the functions in the standard library, in the Closure standard library. Uh, there are many of them. This is uh, like worth a few years of uh, screencasts. Um, I'm not sure if we are going to go that far and do the entire thing, but certainly I'm going to enjoy this and I hope uh, you're going to enjoy this too. And the uh, function that we and the examples that we're going to see in these screencasts are mostly coming from uh, a book I'm working on uh, by Manning and is available here on uh, the Manning website. Uh, so if you enjoy the content of the screencast, uh, you are interested in knowing more about the function in the standard library, there's a good chance you're also going to like this book. Um, I hope you enjoy the screencast um, and also enjoy the book if you buy it. For this very first episode, we are going to uh, see something that is uh, hopefully not too complicated. It's a nice little function called fnil. Uh, it's not very common. You, you're not going to hear this very often. But it's there and it's got a few uh, interesting use cases. Uh, that you might be interested in the next time you're working on uh, some nil input. You might remember about fnil and remember what it can do for you. There are alternatives, there are different ways of doing things, and that's a good thing. Um, you can also quickly check the sources by doing source or f of fnil, and you can see uh, it's got three arities. Uh, it's taking a function as the first argument is taking then three uh, arguments of any type. So what is the goal of this function? Uh, this is a higher order function. It takes your function, which is uh, uh, the thing, your target uh, that you want to patch, so to speak, and uh, it takes th up to three arguments, and those arguments are going to be used for the generated function as defaults if any nil is passed in as an argument. Um, probably better uh, showing an example on how about how this can be used. Uh, but basically, let's say you have uh, um, a pattern match, pattern matching um, string of some sort. You want to verify if you can say, hey, hello, you in some string that is coming to you and you can use uh, refined for that and refined is going to return uh, the matching part of the string if any uh, if not it's going to return nil if you use refined and uh, you are matching on maybe external input that is coming from uh, the input the user input or uh, third-party services and so on uh, you might receive a nil instead. If you receive a nil, you get this uh, uh, nasty null pointer exception. So depending on the application, you might need to take care of that. Uh, there are many ways you can take care of that. You can do a try catch. You can use a condition. Um, but maybe it's this is a very good use case for functional programming. Uh, by using higher order function, you can remove uh, a condition essentially or removing a try catch and both of them are not absolutely bad things to have uh, but they increase the complexity of the program so if you can remove this complexity and remove a condition you don't need to think about the two branches of a condition that is a, a decrease in the complexity of the program so fnil can be helpful in this um, how would you use uh, fnil is a, we said a, a function generator so you produce a different function, um, so we can call it uh, refined plus, just to differentiate the name, but knowing that we are talking about the good old refined, where we are uh, dealing with nil arguments, with defaults for nil arguments, and you use fnil. And fnil take, is taking uh, the, reg the original function, the, the one you want to wrap around, and up to three arguments that are the default if you pass nil to that function. So uh, let's say we pass a nil rejects. 
so we can use for example the empty rejects as a default and we can use the empty string as a target string as a default if you pass nil once you define this new refined you can use it in place of your old refined occurrences and you just use it as usual so you would pass uh, any rejects and say you pass nil this time we are getting back a nil we are not going null pointer exception because we are replacing that nil with an empty string and we can do the same with the uh, rejects if that if that is the case for your application, you can do that with all arguments, not just the, the last or not just the first. Um, how would it be without fnil? Why do you want to use it? Then you might have something like this, where you check, let's say, s string s, and uh, then you go through your regex. Re re uh, to see if s is matching or not. Of course, we don't have any s, so we define hello and we try again. And y as you can see, uh, it's going as expected. It's matching on a low, but uh, with with the when you can of course also pass in a nil, and that will go through. Um, so essentially, with f nil, we are able to replace a condition, this condition specifically with a non-condition, with something that is not a condition. Uh, there is a condition inside of nil, but you don't, you don't see it. That's the important part. So you can use refine plus and everything goes uh, without any exception. So you would use f nil if this kind of rule needs to be applied in multiple places in an in space or in multiple namespaces. So if you need to reuse this, you define the actual function and you can reuse it across uh, the application. Um, so we talked about the arities of fnil. It's got only three, meaning that if you try something more than three, let's see what happens. So let's say you want to generate uh, an fnil for plus, where if you pass in any nil arguments, you're going to replace them with some like neutral uh, number like zero for addition so you want five of them but if you try you'll see that you're passing the wrong now uh, number of arguments of nil uh, because f nil only supports three of them unfortunately um, I would say unfortunately up to a certain point so if you have a function with four five six arguments you're probably looking at something that needs refactoring in some other way some uh, probably some abstraction is missing and you need to extract uh, that abstraction out and uh, remove or reduce the number of arguments. But let's say you really need that, we can easily extend FNIL to support more arguments. Um, to do that, we'll define our own FNIL, we'll call it FNIL plus, and instead of taking like three arguments, uh, we'll just take a variable number of arguments. Uh, then, as a contract, we'll definitely have to return uh, the generated function, and this will be a function of any number of arguments because uh, this is what the problem we are trying to solve. So, to wrap with fnil a function that has uh, more than three arguments, potentially any number. Um, what we need to do then is apply the target function to these arguments but when we do apply to the arguments we need to take care of the potential uh, nil arguments and replace them with something that is coming from opts from the options that we are passing to fnil um, you need to, to take care also uh, of the fact that the number of arguments you're going to apply f2 might be less of the number of arguments that you have defaults for um, so what I'm going to do is to create a sequence uh, that contains nil defaults for all those defaults that are not given as options. Um, better showing you what I'm talking about. So I'm going to map. 
over the sequence and if I'm if I'm in front of a nil argument then I'm going to return the default this is the logic if not then I can just return the argument I don't need to do anything and what I'm mapping on are the arguments what would be actually passed in during the invocation and a sequence that is the concatenation of opt opts which are my options my defaults with any number of nils to pad at the end. This makes sure that uh, I have enough defaults, I have always enough defaults to cover any possible cases, even if they are not, uh, the, the, the right number of arguments is not passed in. So if we do this, um, I'm gonna show you what this new fnil plus can do. And for example, in the case of plus that we were looking at before we'll define a, a new plus plus function that is using fnil plus instead of the normal fnil over plus which is our target function and then we say i want like five potential uh, defaults for nils that are passed in to my plus function or double plus function so what i can do now that i cannot do before i, w I wasn't able to do before and I show you what I'm able to do now. If I do this with the normal plus, I'm getting uh, an null pointer exception. But if I use uh, the double plus, that is going through and is summing up all the numbers that are available. Is removing is basically uh, removing the nil from the list of arguments and summing up the rest. And it's replacing nil with the default uh, I gave, which is a zero. Um, as potential uh, potential alternatives, we saw that you can use when, uh, you can use a condition, you can use a try catch. There's also another uh, interesting function in the standard library you could use if you don't need this uh, behavior to be reused in the entire application. And this is the threaded, thread, thread first and thread last sum uh, option. And if I do, for example, if you do pass hello to my refined where I'm checking a hey, you hello thing, uh, this is perfectly fine. And this got also uh, the nice, oh, um, why is returning nil? Uh, uh, interesting and let me just check why this is it this is the case I wasn't expecting that oh yeah I inverted the rejects um, sorry for that so well anyway let's say I'm searching hello uh, and I'm finding hello uh, the good thing about some threaded last is that I can also pass in nil so let's say my s is still defined as nil if I have this input coming through and I pass it through this will have the same effect uh, as f nil and this is a nice alternative as I said uh, this is not something you would um, assign to a var in a namespace to reuse this is something you use uh, once and uh, if that is the case for you, this is a good alternative. Um, last thing I want to talk about in this first screencast is uh, the performance profile of FNIL. So FNIL uh, as it is, like uh, in the standard library, let's have a look again on the sources, is a very uh, simple function. It's not doing um, anything, per anything particularly um, Oh, sorry. Yes, it's not doing anything particularly bad. Is um, uh, is just basically um, using nested if statements to obtain the effect of replacing the nil with the default you give. Um, the pers the performance profile of this with the limitation that you cannot pass more 
than three arguments is a cost constant time uh, generation of the function and a constant time application as well, big O of three basically. Um, with the fnil plus that we showed uh, before, uh, instead the generation is still remaining a uh, constant time, so fnil will generate just fine in constant time, but the application of course will be linear because we'll have to iterate through the number of arguments you're passing you're passing through and check if they are nil and uh, uh, apply the rule to replace the nil argument with a default. Um, we can see that uh, quite easily if we um, for example uh, if we take um, f nil plus and we create well so let's redefine our plus plus function with nil plus where instead of just using like uh, five arguments as we did before um, we give defaults for uh, like a big range of arguments let's say one billion or or so of arguments so this generation is just uh, instant it's a constant time we don't need to go um, we don't need to iterate through the range at the moment everything is lazy it's going to be iterated as you use it um, if you then uh, use the plus plus function as usual uh, yes oops I did I did apply F nil without specifying the plus if we do this uh, this is still um, is not going to uh, it's not going through the entire sequence uh, of the range to apply the defaults because we are not passing enough arguments and soon as we go up with that so let's put a time uh, on this as soon of course as soon as we go up with this so we apply double plus to more arguments say uh, 10, 10 millions and we see that the uh, the time to do this computation go up and um, it's roughly linear computation and, and it's coming back now in eight, eight, about eight seconds. Um, so this is it for this first episode. I hope uh, you enjoyed. Um, if you like this content, have a look at the book. Uh, a few sample chapters are available. Um, and also if you enjoyed this screencast, I hope you'll enjoy the next one in roughly one week i hope to keep up with uh, the the weekly thing uh, the weekly screencast plan um i might miss one or two but uh, we'll see how it goes so thank you for listening goodbye